Hi everybody, welcome back to our Wandering Women. This will be the third, the third of our wanderers. Um, this was our first and she wandered herself over to India. I still like this one actually, it's got lots of texture, lots of interest. I love this splotchy background and I really love the purple. I don't know what came over me, it's not a colour I'd usually go for really, but I like that. And what else? What else did we do? We did our little French girl um, with a little row of Parisian flower shops, maybe at a push, and the Montgolfier's balloon, Eiffel Tower, and our our little girl there with a berry on and a stripy French top. Um, and a little cravat. So today, where are we going today? Well, have a look, see if you can guess. Sharon, if you're on, you guessed it. You actually guessed it. So this is a map of da, 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 the Netherlands. Yay! <laughs> and uh, I'm going to I'm going to decoupage that onto there. It's just a sheet that's been printed out uh, on on the printer, so it's not uh, decoupage paper or anything. And this similarly has just been printed out, and it's a little Delft tile, um, Holland, Holland I think, but the Netherlands is pretty famous for this Delft ware. This beautiful sort of white background and um, almost flow blue image on the on the pottery that they they made and I, I, I love it. So the book itself you may remember is what's called an altered book. This one is paintings, drawings and sketchings uh, of Renoir and all I've done is I've gone through the book and I've stuck two pages together. So we've got double the thickness of the of the book when it was you know how it was meant to be. So I asked if you wanted to see the background being made and you said you did. So this is what I'm going to do for my background. I did, I've had loads of thoughts mulling over what I should do for the background. I was going to do sort of orange and white melange, if you like, um, melange. Um, but I decided I really like this map and this, although it's delft and really should be white, I'm going to put a sepia ink over it so they both sort of um, sort of marry up a bit. So the first thing to do, as you would do with any any background, we yeah, out. let's have a shout out. Uh, Shaz says hello, everybody. Hi, Shaz. Uh, Alison's joined us. Hi, Alison. Sharon. <laughs> You're right, Sharon. Uh, Dorothy says hi. Hi, Dorothy. Thanks for joining us. And, ooh, nice. Ooh, nice. Alison says. Uh, the door is locked and the phone is off. <laughs> and your granddaughter, I'm hoping she's doing all right, poor little son. And Alison says, quite often windmills. Fiona today, I bought gesso. Good start. Good start. In fact, you can't start without it. So the best of starts. So this is my gesso. It's uh, a, it's golden gesso, and I bought it because, as you do it, as you know, I do fine art acrylic um, pieces, and you use gesso as a ground for for acrylics. If I was just doing art journals and pieces of um, multimedia, is that what it's called? Mixed media, uh, not multimedia. That's like the telly in that, isn't it? Complete <laughs> 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 the telly. <laughs> Mixed media. I wouldn't go for golden. It's just it's too expensive. It's um it's made to a really really good recipe um for fine artists and it's just not necessary for this. But I've got it and I'm not going out to buy any more because it's not exciting. If it was something like crayons or felt tips or something, then I would go and buy more. But it's not necessary for this. So I'm just going to cover the pages and when I cover them, they will all buckle up again. Uh, once they get wet but once they dry out for good and ever they will be flat so don't worry about that so we'll just give this the once over actually before I do that where did I 
Right, that's one. Where did I? Let's try and keep this to a minimum today. That's not good enough. I'm just going to use some of this. It's like greaseproof paper, freezer paper, sandwich paper, deli paper. It has lots of names. It's just thin waxed paper that doesn't stick to things. So I'm going to use that to put under here. Because I don't want it getting on all the pages and sticking them together. I'm just putting that there. I'm going to put one under the other side as well. Oh, that's heavy. Paula says hello. Hi, Paula. Your mermaid. Your well, she's not a mermaid. Is she a mermaid? I don't know if she is a mermaid. Um, it's a carousel. It's a horse fairground rider carousel, and it's a lady who may be a mermaid. I'm visualising a tail, and I think it is. And oh, it's lovely. It's delicious. You need to pop over to Fairy Chic Emporium, have a look at that, and definitely be there seven o'clock tomorrow night when she'll be carrying on with it. I will be there. I'll probably most likely see some of you there. I generally do. So this is a primer. This is what gesso is. It's it's a primer and it allows you then to be able to put inks, watercolours, whatever you fancy on top of it. It has the added bonus in this book because it's an altered book of dulling down the image that was um, was already there. Although in this case, because we're sticking whole sheets of paper over it, I think um, we'd have probably been all right. But I do want to put sepia ink on on the big decoupage sheets and it wouldn't work properly without the gesso. It just doesn't move. It's, it just goes where you put it and doesn't move. So that's fine. As you see, it's all cockling up. Uh, don't worry. Do not panic. It'll all be all right on the night. Got little bits of purple there, but I'm not fussed. It'll cover up all right. Once I've got this done, I'll show you the elements that I've got that I'm putting on it. Um, Mr. Fix-It has been invaluable this morning, running around trying to find things that, uh, that I know we have, but just can't quite put my finger on. Yesterday, I spent the day tidying up because I, I just couldn't sit down at my table. It was just getting ridiculous. Um, and I, I was very aware that on Wednesday I spent at least half the lifetime going, where is this? Where is that? So I've had a good tidy up. I'm not particularly ill fay with where things are in the drawers yet, Dorothy. Um, so it is, yes, it's a question of opening every single drawer until you find things. But I did find things that I didn't even know I had, um, which, which is always a nice find because it's like getting something new, isn't it? And I'll show you one of those things in a minute when I get this on. So you see, it's not, I mean, it's not the most even. There's brush strokes in it. You know, I can't believe I'm saying this, but don't worry about it. Um, clean any surplus off in there and then drop it in water because gesso is quite tacky. And if you leave your brushes um, just with gesso in open air, You'll spoil them. I mean, that's that's a brush that has been spoiled already, uh, not by me. I hasten to add, um, so I'm not so fussed about it. It's a rough brush now. Is there anybody else joined us? Um, Paula says hello. Hello, Paula. <laughs> um, no, nobody else. Nobody's okay. Commented, so. Ah, they may be lurking. Could could you dry that for me, please? Thank you very much. And I'll move on to our whoa, my paper. Right, so I'll move on to show you the elements that I'm going to stick on my uh, art journal. Right, so, I mean, a windmill. You've just, you've just got to have a windmill. I mean, there's kind of no getting away from it. But I didn't just want to stick it down, print it out and stick it down. It's becoming a bit like a, a child's... Um, school thing so i decided that i would paint it in watercolor because as you know i'm trying to stay away from acrylics with this art journal because acrylics the very mention of them makes me tight it makes me want to put loads of details in 
that I don't actually want in this art journal. So I'm forcing myself to use watercolours. I've never used them before. I'm sure if somebody who is a watercolourist saw me, they would be appalled. But I'm, I'm trying to teach myself how to use them. And I, gradually, I think I'm getting a wee bit better. I, um, you'll see on the actual one that it's got these flags that are just sort of like wire or lattice, lattice is the thing, which I can't put on yet until I've got the background on because you can see through them to the background. So, and I can't decide what height it is either <laughs> to see exactly where it's fitting on the page. So that's my windmill. When I'd finished it, I just, and cut it out, I just went around with a black pen around all the edges, but I was really shaken. <laughs> I mean, I'm always shaking, but at that time I was particularly shaky and I've come over a couple of places. It's an art journal. Let's live with it, shall we? So the other thing that is um, famous about uh, the Netherlands, Holland, are these tulips. Tulips from Amsterdam, in fact. Thank you so much, my dear. Very good lad. Uh, so they're going to form a border along the bottom underneath my windmill once I decide what height I want my windmill at. Then we have, look at this, this is so lovely. This is the... Paula is inviting everybody to share. Thank you Paula. I never remember that. If you, if you feel like you know somebody or you're in a group that you think would enjoy this live, please can you share it to them? Um, I mean don't share it to granny and you know your daughter or whatever if they're not interested in this because it will just annoy them um but if you know if you know people that you think might be interested i would really really appreciate it if you share it gets gets my name out there gets a bit more going on in the group and uh, thank you very much paula for reminding me of that so yeah this is the girl with the pearl earring a very 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 famous painting by uh, vermeer dutch artist I chose this one because I love it so much. And then one of the things I found yesterday that I didn't know I had, frames. <laughs> I didn't even know I had them. Turns out anyway, I've got five this sort of large size and five of a smaller size. So um, we did her in the smaller size and she was just a little bit on the little side. I wanted to be able to see her. So um, we've done her in this large size and I'm actually gonna do the frame in gold rub and buff. That's the intention at the moment. And then we have Our Lady. And Our Lady, of course, is Dutch and she's wearing all Dutch national costume here. Um, so all I've done with her is, I've kind of copied vaguely her out onto a piece of card, the same as I used for the windmill. And I'm gonna paint her costume in, put some proper lace for a hat and this bit here. The rest you will be glad to know is just painting. I'm not, um, I'm not fighting with fabric today to get this in. Um, but uh, yeah, she does have plaits like this. Look, plaits. You know, chop that in half, and that's a plait. What do you think? Cool, isn't it? It's it's this. I made it out of this beading, uh, ornamental braid for jewellery design. Something else I didn't even know I had. I don't do jewellery, I, I never have. So quite how we've ended up with it. it. Must have been in a job lot or something, I don't know. But it's turned out useful today. And there are three sort of shades of this yellowy, goldy, blondy sort of colour. So I've used two strands of each and made a braid plait. Um, and I'm, when we get round to needing it, I'll chop it in half and stick it there. Yeah, oh yeah, and we use this, which is um, one ninety nine a thing, apparently. Uh, it's for doing those, what are they called? Cooey mo. Cooey. What on earth are they called, those things? Like, you sort of weave it on pegs, don't you? Yeah, it's a Japanese. Yeah, it's a Jap Yeah, anyway, it's got wire in the middle, so you can see you can bend it and it'll stay in shape. Whatever use that might be to you to know, I've no idea, but now you do. So that's the braid, that's all our elements really. The only thing that's still left to make up, well, you know, the whole thing's to make up, but to actually do is her, um, paint her 
costume, a face, and then do this lazy business and a braids. So I'll leave that till near the end, and hopefully then the shapes will be better because I have taken my tablets. So let's stick our um, backgrounds down first and see where we go from there. Let's just check them the right way up. Yep. Um, so let's just let's just check that we think we've got those the right way around. Um, I want to put her, our little darling, over there. Alison says it looks like she's got big ears. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. She look, she looks exactly like big ears. I think that's what she's trying and the effect she's going for, actually. I want that about there. And I've got one of these that's taller. Yay. Oh, no. That goes to there. Yeah, that's all right. So that can go to there. That can go there. This can go there with a little bit cut off for the lady, which will fit in there. Hey, de ho -de. Right, that's the plan. That is the plan. Right, so let's just stick these on. I'm going to stick them on with a uh, Pritt stick. Uh, I think it was Carol last time that suggested I used PVA glue. It's a really good suggestion, Carol, and it is, if I was sit sitting here by myself, doodling away, I would certainly use PVA glue. But just for the live, we need something that's instantly grabbable. So that's why you see me reaching for sort of heavier weight glues and prit, which, you know, sticks pretty readily. It's a thoroughly miserable day here. I've no idea what it's like with you, but it's absolutely running down the windows. Where? Going in your shoes. Yes, got it. I just want this to cover that um, picture that was already on the on the thing. So I've got my brayer. You might have seen me use this when I was jelly printing. It, it's a useful thing to have. This isn't the largest one, but it's a handy size. So this just sort of lends a bit of muscle to it, lets it stuck down. I hope you're enjoying our Wandering Women series. Um, Mr. Fixit likes the more uh the the thrill seeking version the uh other other art journal that we were doing when really we didn't have much of a clue about what we were doing until it happened um and he kind of he likes that so on monday we're going to go back to our other art journal the more experimental one let's say um and i'll select a topic or you can select one for me if you want to um and we'll you know, we'll get out all the toys, all the toys I can think of that I can get on one sheet of paper. Um, and we'll have a jolly good play. Because I know that you enjoyed seeing things that perhaps you didn't have, like the um, Krylon webbing spray. That seemed to be a huge success with you all, and I love it too. Um, Dorothy said she's happy she's just had her eyes valued. Oh, I hope they valued it for more than you thought. Um, and Ziggy says, Hello, I'm not naked. <laughs> <laughs> well you know there's always something to be thankful for always are you back from your hollyhocks uh, Ziggy looked like you had a really nice time you made the very very best of it which is always nice um, just bray this down again a bit there that doesn't want to stick so this is probably also having the effect of um, gluing the cockley bits back down in the pages. But don't worry about them. You know, really don't worry about them because they do go flat when they dry. Where's my crit stick? I'm so sort of used to Ziggy being naked that 
It's so playing on my mind now that she's not. <laughs> I know. It helps get me through the lives. The mere thought of it. Oh my God, Ziggy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm quite happy with that. The um, gesso is dry. I'm just debating whether to put a coat of clear gesso over that because it is just copy of paper. So sorry, people. That is what I'm going to do. Yeah, this this I bought when we started doing the art journals and it's transparent gesso and as you can see it's by PVO which are they do a lot of craft stuff. They actually also do um, a range of acrylics but I would put them, you know, kind of second string really. Um, well with acrylics possibly even third. But this is fine for what we need it for, for this. I'll just get rid of that white gesso that's still on my brush. It might be a little bit, but it won't make much odds to us. And all this seems like a heck of a lot of prep. And and it is. But you want your page to look nice and you want it to have some longevity. Um you know, I, I like Paul, I believe as well, have journals that we made way back and um, when I started doing this again and I got them out and seen what I'd done it was really interesting really interesting to see where my head was at that time um, one of them I found was extraordinarily dark I uh, obviously wasn't feeling my best when I was doing that but generally speaking it's just nice to see how you've gone about it how you've dealt with the problem if you, you know, if you want to look at it that way, and what what your results were overall. So we'll just do this other page. I think he says yes, I am. I think she's going to be on the day. Ah, we were going to stay longer, but a text message from the friends we were borrowing the apartment from saying, "Do you remember you're coming back this evening?" So oh. to cut that short. Oh my goodness. We hadn't remembered and we were on a train to Exmoor. Oh, what a shame, eh? My sister at the moment is on her holidays with her husband and they are on the most northerly habitated, lived on uh, island in the UK. They're on Unst in the Shetlands. So I hope they're having slightly better weather than us, otherwise I think it'll be a bit... As they say in Scotland, Dreek. A bit miserable and rainy. Um, but she's sending me emails and they do some... They're walkers, they're incredible walkers. And she's about three stone wet through. A bit there. Okay. I'll wait until I just put my brush in the water. I wasn't picking up on firm in me. No. Pointy fingers. And a bit to the left. Of that bit? Same, same level, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Right, shove that in there, put the gessos away. That's not on properly. These gessos that they don't make them for smallish ladies' hands. I think I think that's it. Oh no it's not. Please could you fix that for me? Thank you. Right, okay, so I need to get that dried, but in the interim, there are jobs that we can be doing uh, while we wait for me. <laughs> to fix it, to do things. Um, this frame needs to be rubbed and buffed. You always miss the exciting bits. <laughs> I'll go and rub and buff myself. I'm not familiar with rub and buff, as you may know, uh, uh, last time I used it was my first time um, and the lid cracked on me and I think um, I'm going to have problems getting this out. Oops. Oh, come on. It's kind of dry. Oh, hey, hello. <laughs> That's a bit of excitement, wasn't it? Right, so. Let's see if this wants to rub into here. 
I've always heard, you know, you um, follow groups and what have you on Facebook. And, you know, people often say, oh, you know, I use drug and both. And I've never, I just have never used it. I don't like that. There's a, there's a glob of rub and buff down there that I don't. That's it. Uh, the first bit out is rock hard. So I'm going to have to do the edges as well because otherwise it will annoy me. I don't know if this is what it's supposed to look like to be honest. It feels a bit grainy. I'm going to try another bit on my finger. I think it's doing the job. It's making our frame gold. I don't know if it has any uniformity to it. I'm sure all of you lot know much better than me about love and love. Just feels grainy like it might have dried up too much or something. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, I was pleased to find these frames yesterday. Um, so I knew that somehow I could use them in my uh, art journal. And then when Sharon came up with Holland as an idea, I thought, yes, I can put, well, I was going to put a Rembrandt in, actually. Um, and then I remembered about the girl with the pearl earring and that one out. I went to a Vermeer exhibition once in uh, London years ago now. Thank you. The rub and buff had dried up because remember the lid cracked. Oh, yes. So I was squeezing, squeezing, then it ejac ejaculated a rather large amount. Mm -hmm. I knew, what happens when you're using rub and buff? I knew that you would lower the tone. I knew it. As soon as I used the word ejaculate, I thought, hmm, it's going to be on it. Right, do you think that's enough rub and buff? This is the question. And you just keep going on. I don't know. Does that look rub and buffed? Rubby and buffy? I think I'm going to have to find an alternative means for my lid because you see it's it's a broken so let's just have a little bit of a clean up here before we get gold on everything that we don't really want it on I was just talking about um, how art therapy is good for your mental health who's talking about that? everybody, everybody. yeah it certainly is actually how I got into art in the first place yeah Mr Fixit tells me that you're discussing art therapy um, and how it works and it really does I think it's just the time you know unless you're doing a live <laughs> the time that you're doing it basically you're not really thinking about anything else it's occupying most of your brain so the rest of it, the worrying part and the nervous part and whatever, um, hasn't got a look in, you know. When, that's when you get in the zone and it's great to be in that place. It's lovely. It's a lovely place. And Zingy says it helps with her mental health because it makes her realise she's not the most mental person in the world. <laughs> Have you put that to a jury, Ziggy? <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a poll at the top of the page. <laughs> right, I think that's probably okay. We're not going to get too much too much gold going where we don't want it. Right, so the next thing then is to put sepia over the sepia. Uh, I'm sure you all know, but sepia is... I didn't clean the end of my pencil either. Just clean that. I've got a gold pencil now. Do you want a cloth? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, sepia is, you know, those old photographs of, you know, like your great gran and 
stuff like that where they were they were black and white but they were brown they'd gone brownie or they were brownie all along and that color is called sepia and i happen to have an ink in that color which is why i was keen to get this all you can really feel the tooth on that um gesso it's really quite toothy that pbo pbo one um right i've just got a little palette here but anything will do paper plate anything i was putting out they come with little um pipettes inks generally do um this is a de la Roni one fw ink and i'm just going to get a brush this little one here will do fine and just just put it on the edges if you've got a, um, a stamp i know tim holtz and people like that do loads of um, crafty stuff and he seems to have a really lovely range of sepia stuff i'm using my finger for this because actually it, you just get a better result you get a very dirty finger and if you want to use um, nitrile gloves or rubber gloves or whatever that's probably a good idea really yeah thank you so i don't want to even um an even coverage I want it sort of splotchified. There's a lot of ink on that bit there. I'm just really using this ink up because there's a lot of it. You see the the idea, the impression, and we're getting rid of that blank bit of the paper. Um, where we had no decoupage on. Oh. I do. Can you shake it up and take the lid off for me? Mr. Fix it's just found. <laughs> I don't know what you lot must think my house is like, but you're right. That is what it's like. Um, it's just found some Tim Holtz Distress Oxide paint spray so I'm, I'm going to use that well i'm going to give it a little go see what happens i don't want it to be too dark so it's just opening that at the minute i think i threw me wet, wet on it here. make best use of your wet wipes save the environment right so let's see what this distress Vintage photo, so. Vintage photo, it's called. Come on, that's what we're after. Right? You may want to spray on something else. Yeah, let's have a go on this um, paper plate, see what happens. Oh, yeah, look. It's great. That's perfect. Just the job. Good find. Oh, just sprayed myself. There we are. Do you think that's sepia enough? I still might do the borders of the page with the other one. And this has now got a bit of sepia spray on it, so I'm just going to... That's enough, probably. Good find. Let's see where that came from, or if we bought it or what. I don't know. I do not know, but I do like finds like that. Right, so I've now got this absolutely flipping everywhere. You want to dry it? I do, but just let's just fold that over and see if we can use that on the edge of the page. Yeah, yeah. Might as well make use of it if we've got it. Okay, I'm just going to take a piece of kitchen towel and just wipe away some of that. It's a bit, it's a bit dark for my liking. 
people are suggesting you could also use tea bags. Tea bags, yes, 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 indeed. Of course, we haven't done much of that piece that we did. Um, I used it, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good thing to do. If you're making a cup of tea, and um, that's much better like that, I think. Yeah, I really like that now, and it ties in a bit more with this. Yeah, look at that. So I've still got a little bit of my ink that I put in my palette out. So I'm just going to put that around the edge of this page just to just to marry it up with the other one really. So anyway, you didn't answer me, I don't think. Which do you prefer, the Wandering Women or the more experimental art journal? If you could tell me, I'd be really happy and then I, I wouldn't have to bore you with things you don't want. I feel like them both. Have to be either or. Yeah, if you like them both, that's that's even better. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. I think it's all right. Um, that is really nasty. So on to our next thing. I need to leave this to dry. Well, I don't. I need to get sticking some stuff on. So I'm just going to dry this. Paula's asking which was the experimental one. It was this one, Paula. The, um, no, no, play nice. The one where we had fashion, the lady, um, where we were building up texture on the background um, and just adding, adding stuff because it was nice, not because it had any rhyme or reason to it at all. Um, and that was our one that I was it Alison, I think, came up with Days of Wine and Roses? Um, our very pretty lady with the jewels in her flowers. And then we went out for a riot with this one. This is a steampunk one. It's got lots of cogs and keys and it's got a clock there with a B on it. Um, decoupage background. You know, it was... Um, then I stamped some numbers on it and just literally wrote the legend Time Flies. Um, which is actually Mr. Fixit's favourite of all the art journals we've done this time around. So that was the experimental one, Paula, where really we don't have a clear plan. It just is what it is. So back to uh, Wandering Women. Right, so we've got this dry. We need to start sticking on some of our elements. So I'm thinking that the first thing we need to stick on is... You couldn't, oh no, I just what? need to find somewhere flat because I think it's going to go flying. Right, I've still got some of that ink which may come into play, so I don't really want to just chuck it out. So, it was Dorothy, it was Dorothy. yeah. Oh, sorry, Dor sorry, Paul, I'm answering a question that you didn't um, ask. Um, right, so this needs to go. I don't want it right in the middle because that would just be too predictable. Actually, it doesn't stand out that well, does it? Well, enough. Well, I can always put some white gesso down and, and bring it out. But that needs to go specifically where the tallest of the tulips 
cover up that bottom bit. So let's just slide it down a bit. And slide it up a bit till we get it exactly right there. Right, so let's just make a mark where I need to cut that along there. Right, so let's just chop it off. Let's boldly go. So right, that's going to go there. So she, she likes both. Oh, good. Thank you, Sharon. So she likes the elements you're using with the ladies. Yeah. They're coming out really great. Oh, thank you so much, Sharon. That's really, really nice of you to say that. Thank you. And thank you for always being with us when we're live. It means an enormous amount. Really, really does. Right, so shall I stick that with Prit or that very sticky glue? Or I could spray some of that. Yeah, you could. You could show them what it is first. It's it's legend this stuff. That's very full. Ah. Oh, blue gone. we don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how many is that that we're up to now? <laughs> what have you done with it? I might have tidied it up, thinking it was something else. No, I've just got two webbings here. It's all right. I could have had it stuck on by now. Let's get it stuck on with a, with something. Well, it's pretty your other option. You don't think that sticky stuff glue would work? This one? No, Prit. If you think you can spread it. No, I don't really. I'll go for Prit. Do you want to do the paper to put it on? Yeah, that would be a good idea. Um, I don't know if you're aware, you people in the UK, but Hobbycraft are having an amazing sale at the moment. All the Sennelier abstract paints that I use for uh, my acrylic work are half price. They're now £2 each, um, which is phenomenal, I think. They've got loads of sketchbooks, um, loads of stuff. Just, you know, go there with... Being prepared to spend money, let's just say that. Although I went and I didn't spend any money. I haven't cut the bottom of this off level. <laughs> Got a little wonk. That looks square. Yeah, I think that's square enough. That's going to fold. Get off. Just going to fold that over so lies into the crease of the of the book okay i think that's all right i'm just gonna brayer it down okay i've stuck him on with crit we did get some glue you see in a spray can um if you're wondering what we're on about from guess what the pound shop and it, it was so st so sticky you, you just had to be on it as soon as you put it onto something you had to be ready to actually put it onto what you were sticking it to it was like magic um and now with the cleanup yesterday it's gone somewhere and i don't know where it's gone right okay that's not too bad it's all right it's all right it's all right so this comes along here. Let's just see if we can make it come a little bit further. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah we can. We can, we can. So I'm going to... Oh, need, need, I need to stick this bit on first. That's the, that's the order of play, I think. Maybe at the end of this, then the prick. I've just hung the other one in my hand. All right, I'm going to say it again. Where's the other prick gone? I mean, come on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's it, right in front of me. So you're all getting geared up for a nice weekend. 
for us it's going to be quite a lazy one I think I will no doubt be painting because I feel a day when I'm not creating art is a day lost I love creating art oh lovely Mr Fix it's just come in with a whole pile of the print sticks yeah that's going to go there now i am aware that this is not a transition it's you know it's the same thing just a different size but i really honestly believe it doesn't matter i even unearthed my little shopping trolley yesterday look it's so cute isn't it little shopping cart used to always, when I was painting, I used to always sit on the um, on the table and have, you know, pencils and charcoal and that sort of stuff in it, eraser. So this just needs to sort of cuddle up to there a bit, go along the bottom and get stuck down. I probably could have moved that windmill up a bit actually, but it's 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 all right. It's all right. Sorry, Sharon says they have a three day weekend because it's Labour Day on Monday. Ah, right. We had a, a what we call a bank holiday here this yeah, last Monday. Monday, yeah. So um, yeah, I know what you mean. It's quite nice, I think, for the folk that actually have a nine to five job to get a longer weekend. Nine to five is miserable. So there's our pretty tulips in. And they alter the whole flavour of the thing, don't they? It gets away from that brown or sepia. Right, so I'm quite happy with those. They look quite nice. Looks quite nice like that. It's cold today. <laughs> Why would I go on? Right, so I think the next thing to do is to stick uh, the girl with the pearl earring in. Now I want to, I don't particularly want to block him because he's a nice little Dutch fellow. But I'm going to have to. I want her in the top corner because that looks very um, predictable. There. I don't want her face next to our lady, our girl's face, really. I want the faces to be on separate pages. Well, I don't know. What about there? What's wrong with there? Bring her in a bit. What's wrong with there? Does that look all right? I don't think this is rubbed and buffed to the best capacity. No, it's all right. I just think it's got bits where there's... Or I haven't put very much. Right, so what does she look like? Does she look best like that or on a bit of a wonk? I am asking you guys because I really would like an answer. On a bit of a wonk like that, straight up. I think I like a straight up better. Anybody answered my question? On a one course straight. Um, I think I'm going to have to cover that Dutch guy, little Dutch fella, up. Um, he's looking at his boats. Obviously, he's a merchant and they're off du Dutch East Indies Company. I'll tell you something when I do a page, a spread like this on a country. I should go on mastermind about the country. My specialised subject is the Netherlands because I learn about the geography. I learn what makes them sort of famous, the costumes, the, what they eat. Um, 
<laughs> so yeah, I, I am learning. It's a very learning thing for me. And, and I, I like that. I like to learn things. I'm going to stick her, stick her down with Prit. I'm going to stick that in the bin because it's just going to keep annoying me. It was just on the one, was it? We've printed this off with the laser printer, but you can equally do it with the uh, inkjet. And we've used photographic paper just to try and get a really good clear image. So is that straight there? Just bring her in a wee bit there. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to get your T square out before I do anything? Yeah, not much as far off actually. No, it's good. So she's stuck down with Prit. Not very well. And Prit isn't adhering to that spray. Okay, that's not working. Do you think that squeezy glue, or shall I use my hot, hot glue gun? Yeah, I'll put some of that squeezy glue on. It's shaping up all right, this though, isn't it? You know, from a blank page to this, we're already getting places, I feel. Like to Amsterdam, for example. The flags, as I said to you on the windmill before, they have this sort of lattice here, which I'm going to put in just with a felt tip pen. Um, and I don't think I'm actually even going to draw them with a ruler. I want that sort of hand-drawn look I mean once I watercolored this I went black back over with a black um, fine marker and went around the the edges yeah yeah I like her there so I'm probably gonna need the same thing on the frame I think uh, so they they will be to do at some stage but we're still all right. We're still a ways away from um, go with pearl earring. So really, the only thing left to do is this girl. So I intend to paint a scarf, paint a blouse. Let's have a look at what she looks like. Paint a scarf just with felt tip pens. I'm, I'm not. I'm not getting acrylics out. I'm not. Um, and do a stripy blouse. This down the front under her scarf is lacy, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to um, put lace down there. Her face will be painted. Well, actually, I'm going to do it with colouring pencils. And then we need a braids on. And then we need to build this big ears hat that she's got. So the first thing to do, I would say, is um, colour her clothing in. Yeah, does that look right? Does it look all right? I don't know. Just on the one, can't you? Ah. That's it. Lovely. So we've stuck that down with that really sticky uh, tube of glue that we got from the pound shop. It's just called clear glue. Oh, that looks lovely. Oh, I love her there. I love it. It's gorgeous. Right, so it's time to move on to this girly, our lady who is the travelling girl. The wandering woman. Right, so I've got out. All oh, right, okay. Um, 
I've got out these two quite thick markers, the Posca pens. You've seen me use the Posca pens before, but the narrower ones, narrower nibbed ones, um, these are the next size up, I believe, the 5mm. I've never used this thickness before. I'm hoping it's going to be all right. It doesn't really matter if it bleeds through, but I don't think it will because it's acrylic paint in here. And it does dry very, very quickly, as you would expect with acrylic paint. So let's give it a shake and get going. Oh, it looks like it's a nice colour. Uh, so I'm just putting stripes in willy nilly. Might put them two, two stripes wide. And if you've got fabric and you want to do that, it would be lovely. But I think you've seen me <laughs> struggling with practice with fabric just once too often, perhaps. So uh, I decided to to go for this. This one comes down and then it breaks. It was a bit of consternation when you put it on that side, but I think you forgot about this lady. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, I chose to put the faces on different on opposite sides. I didn't want the two faces together on the one page. That's really the reason that uh, I went for that. I'm not really copying anything here. I'm just trying to make it look like it's just not a solid piece of fabric, which I think we're succeeding in. It's all right. It's okay. It's going straight down here. I think that'll look all right once we've uh, once I've tidied it up. So this seems to go. I can't see it, but it does look like it goes to about there. She's got plaits and scarf and braids on the end of her um, plaits, so you can't really see everything very clearly. There, I say it, these poskas are working really well, nice and thick. They're doing the job. There's no blotches from them yet, which is great. I have a set of Derwent line makers, they're called, and um, the, I wouldn't recommend them to anyone. They really, they're not great. They go blotchy. Right, so I'm going to paint a scarf in. You should always make sure your lid's on before you shake your poskas. So did we have a decision on which people like or don't like? Oh no. People think like both. Oh, that's good. That's excellent then. I like both as well. Um, but I think on Monday I will go back to the, assuming we finish this today, which we might not, I will go back to the experimental one because um, it's just, it's just a little bit more, you know, more exciting. cover the area quite quickly don't they 
and they're acrylic so nothing's going to happen to them I'm going to come back in with a black pen and just um, define the knot etc in this scarf She looks a bit odd, doesn't she? I don't know if you can see, but she looks a bit like big ears. <laughs> right then, now for my next trick. Oh, that red gold around her neck. That comes up around here. Dorothy thinks her theme is a good idea, but she loves both. Oh, thanks, Dorothy. Thank you for answering. Um, I know I can rely on you for a straight uh, straight answer which is good that's what I want right so now I just want a black uh, liner oh I even left one out sometimes I stagger myself um let's just check that's dry it's just about nearly dry it's acrylic so it really doesn't take long to dry but just give me a sec guys Right, that's good and dry. Good and dry. So we've got some lines that need to go on this just to define uh, parts of the scarf. This comes along here, goes to there. Let's just do the edges. I think it's always nice for this sort of work if you just accentuate certain bits. Makes it easier to read as a viewer. So that's kind of a knot in there. So I'm going to go around this all, I think, actually. I like the way that it's making it stand out. Of course, you don't have to um, follow the lines quite as doggedly either. It's often very nice if you go not on the line i like that i like that look a lot actually so there's a line along here where uh, the yoke of a blouse shoulder sort of bit um and these are they're just sort of in shadow if i was really being pernickety which i'm not um that's the start of a sleeve uh, sorry where did you buy those pens from the Posca pen, these pens, the Posca pens from um, Amazon. These are a recent acquisition. I mean, recent, probably six months ago. Um, and I, I'd actually seen Ginger Cook, the acrylic artist will know who Ginger Cook is. She's a, a YouTube star, really. Um, and she does acrylic paintings and she always signs a name or does anything that's particularly fiddly with these Posca pens. So having seen her use them, I absolutely needed to have them, of course. Um, and I have the narrower ones. Um, the white ones, that just use sort of the full. They are the narrow, narrower ones. See the gamut of the sizes. <laughs> Right. I'm supposed to fix it, gets it into his head that I want something or that I like something. He does not stop. He is tireless, tireless, I tell you, in his search for trawling, eBay, any selling site that he can find until he fulfills my desire, which in this case was a Posca pens. It could be worse, couldn't it? So, I mean... Apart from the one set of the narrow, the narrow size, which is this, uh, this size, 
That's quite a really fine tip on it. Can't really see that there. Um, all the rest of it are second hand. But this is a good one to show you. This is the narrow one I've just shown you. I think this is the one that they use for the anime stuff, which obviously I don't do. Um, and then they just go up in sizes. Look at the size of that one. I'm not sure actually that we haven't got. Is that a, is that a satisfy? Uh, in those. I'll know. also show you something else that may be of interest. Um, this is a Pentel white, Pentel white, and it's it's thick. We tried to get this lid off yesterday, and it was. <laughs> yeah, this is fifteen mil. Um, I don't know where to show it to you on. I haven't got anything coloured yeah, down here. It's it is bright white. It's picking up this ink actually, so I don't really want to do that anymore. Um, no. Yeah, there you go. So it's acrylic paint, um, and I mean that's just gigantic. It's actually also quite heavy. This is this Pentel Pentel White, which I, I have had for a long time. I think it needs shaking up a bit more. But it is a really, really white white once it's shaken up properly. Um, so that's kind of the Posca pen situation. They all, you know, each of these sizes comes in a set of all the colours, but I don't really use that many colours. I really generally use white. Um, oh yeah, I'll show you these while I've got them out. Because you never know what might interest you. These are called uh, Molotow. Sounds a bit like that Molotov cocktail to me, <laughs> like a bit dangerous perhaps. Um, but what you do is you open them up, you put in whatever colour it is you want, shake it up, and lo and behold, you've got a marker. That's the tip there, it's that size. So you can have that marker in it in anything, any colour you like. This is another one, um, similar calligraphy type tip but big and then this one this is the granddaddy uh, this one isn't a, a Molotov one it's um, I don't know what brand it is it came from eBay and it's the same thing you unclip it you fill it up you take that off and that is your marker that's the thickness of your marker so you could get some serious paint laid down very quickly indeed i haven't felt the need to do it but i love the fact i own it yeah and the pad thing is is replaceable but i've never had to replace it because i've never used them but on days like yesterday when i'm tidying up things and i come across them it makes me happy uh right where are we eight minutes past five I am going to call it a day at that, I think. Um, yeah, because there's still quite a lot to do. That I don't want to be rushing doing her face like I was last time and she came out like some... <sighs> she didn't come out right. Which I subsequently rectified, incidentally, if you want to know how, by painting her face out completely with acrylic flesh tint paint. Uh, and then I used colouring pencils on top of that. So that, I think, is um, where we're up to today. And it's a sensible place to stop, because I can just imagine if I'm going to put a braids in, you know, I want them sort of there, coming down, obviously it's going to be cut. Um, I, I can just see it all going so hideously wrong, really. And I don't want that. I quite like this page, I want to keep it nice. So she is going to go there when she's finished with her pretty braids. Obviously we're going to cut them. Um, stick them sort of there. And then there's a face to do. And then we've got lace just to make her Big Ears costume. Which is now going to stand up really nicely. 
because we've got this lovely sepia background which I, I do like I'm really glad we put it down and I'm glad I'm glad I started from the beginning today all right you didn't see me paint the windmill but you know it's a watercolor I'm sure you are every bit as good as I am at painting watercolor because I'm really not experienced in it although I'm really trying to learn so yeah I mean by the time we do a laser face braids whatever I think the best thing to do is say I'll catch you next time I'm really really grateful to you all for for joining me here it means a lot to me I really uh, you know I'm glad that you chose to spend this hour, hour and a bit with me if you feel uh, you know that you can that anybody you know would benefit from watching the lives that we do then if you could share it that would be fantastic it really really helps to bolster the whole group up because you get more people in more interactions it's you know it's nicer for everyone um i hope you have a lovely weekend i hope you uh, sharon and all the other us people have a really nice labor day and i shall see you on monday at four o'clock we will continue this and perhaps get the background done for a one in the other art journal so thanks very much people appreciate it